Enterprise Planning, or EPBCS if you will, has several pre-built frameworks or business processes. One of those is the Projects Framework, which includes pre-built planning for contract, capitalized, and non-capitalized projects. So what is a project? Basically, anything with a defined duration. It could be IT installing a new application, the construction department building a new campus headquarters, or HR creating a new training program. The project's framework gives us pre-built content, complements of Oracle, that lets us budget, plan, and forecast corporate projects and initiatives. It could be a contract project, maybe something we're doing for someone outside our organization. It could be a capitalized project where we're making an asset we're going to depreciate, or maybe an indirect project, something entirely coming out of operating expenses. It helps us understand the financial impact of those projects. There could be a review and approval process to decide which projects we're going to do. We might be directly inputting dollar amounts, or it could be driver-based. There is no out-of-the-box trend planning like there is for the financials framework. And we could turn on other things like project summaries, detailed expense planning, revenue planning, analysis, and we can automatically have the project's framework feed across to the financials framework, or we can just implement the project's framework. Indirect projects are primarily expense projects. These are internal projects that do not generate revenue. They do not have any capitalized costs. We have contract projects. These are generally something where you're doing work for a customer and the customer will be reimbursing you, maybe based on time and materials, could be a fixed price, could be your incurred cost plus some amount on top of that, could be another contract project method entirely. And then you, of course, have capitalized projects. These are where you're creating an asset, such as a building or a new data center or a complex software implementation you're going to need to capitalize down. It will track both the financial and the non-financial aspects. And this framework on the cloud even lets you do things such as work in progress, construction in progress. So let's say I want to create a new indirect project. I'm going to go up to my actions on my project details form. I'm going to choose add a project. I'll be able to put in my high level project details. What is the project name, the description, the estimated start date, the estimated end date. I can give it a ranking. How important is the project to me? I can give some high level assumptions about the project, maybe some standardized billing rates, maybe some expectations of how many people are going to be on the project, what time frame they're going to be on the project. I can give it some more detailed expense planning if I want to based on that labor detail. I can look at my calculated expense based on my estimated global rates, based on the number of people I'm going to have on the project. It can multiply those assumptions together, give me some idea of what my total labor expense for that project is going to be. There are also going to be some expenses that are not labor specific. There might be travel expense, maybe I have a monthly cloud software expense, maybe I'm still back in the dark ages buying servers, maybe I'm building out a data center. So we can track those direct dollar amount expenses as well. And then I can look at the labor plus my direct expenses. So in my case, I entered some travel. It calculated my labor for me. There's my cloud software. And we've determined that based on a total of $60,000, for instance, in cloud software implementation costs, $36,667 of that is in this year. One third of the post-launch maintenance ends up being in this year, giving me a 2016 expense for this project of roughly $736,000. Now I want to be able to explain to someone why they should approve this project so I can list the benefit they're going to get. Now a benefit could be a financial benefit. So in my case, I think I'm going to generate new revenue. So I'm going to create 150,000 of additional revenue based on this project. And I'm going to save $25,000 in 2016 and $40,000 in 2017. Now there might also be non-financial benefits. So in my case, I think it's going to increase customer satisfaction. We're going to give them a better customer experience, a better mobile experience, and a more localized experience. It will also generate more digital leads. I might also have a qualitative benefit that I could put in as well. So in my case, I'm now looking at the overall project summary. So I'm seeing when this project is going to pay itself back, what is the benefit cost ratio, the net present value, the total investment. All of this information is automatically pre-built for me thanks to the project's framework. I could, if I wanted to, go create a similar plan for my contract projects and look at the impact of those. To create a new project for contract, I go in and I add a project. I'll tell it the type of project. Maybe it's fixed price. Maybe it's cost plus. When am I going to be able to recognize the revenue for it? Maybe it's monthly. Maybe it's on some milestone basis. When is the revenue going to start coming in? 
If I want to plan expenses for those contract projects, it's fundamentally the same steps as I did for indirect projects, where I will do labor and then I will do the direct expenses that are not labor specific. Planning revenue is a little bit more complicated based on the type of revenue I'm going to be doing. So it could be time material, so how many hours each person expects to put in. Based on the type of revenue I'm going to recognize, it'll give me different options for calculating that revenue. It is entirely driver based. If for some reason I don't want it to be driver based, I can go ahead and type in those revenue amounts. So maybe it's essentially an other project. It's not based on my cost. It's not based on my time materials. It's just based on I plan on getting this amount of money in this time period. I can go ahead and put all that as well. And then I can go look at the overall project. What is the expenses I'm going to put into it? What is the revenue I'm going to get back? So maybe you're a services company. Maybe you're like Interall. So we're doing a project. This is how much we pay our labor. This is what we expect our travel to be. Maybe this is our internal training cost. Once we incur all that labor, this is the revenue we expect to get back. And we can find out that this indeed ends up being a profitable type project. There are several different dashboards pre-built in the application. So you can do analysis on the project profitability, also maybe the project cash flow. When is the money gonna start to come in versus when am I going to have to put those expenses out for it? And then as actuals come in, you can start to analyze the variance of what you expected to do versus what you actually did. I have an overview of all my contract projects all together. So if you are some company that does something for an outside customer, maybe it's a services company, you know, could be consulting, could be law, maybe it's a construction company, you're going out and creating bridges, you can look at those projects individually or total them up to a project manager or even total them up to an entire entity or the company as a whole. Now for capital projects, I'm actually going to be creating an asset. It's something I'm going to depreciate. Maybe I can capitalize the full cost of the project. Maybe I can capitalize some portion of it. Maybe there's something I have to take as an operating expense, but I can determine what portion I'm capitalizing as well as what the length of that capitalization is gonna look like. I could say that certain expenses are going to be directly applied to specific assets. So maybe I know that all the Java effort on this overall initiative is going to create a new Java application. That Java application will be an asset that I can depreciate. Or maybe all of these direct people are going to work on this building and all these other people are going to work on this landscaping portion. I could depreciate those separately. To enable the Projects Framework features, you go to Console, choose Configure, then go to Projects, and choose Enable Features. This is where you would turn on the project types that you want to use, Capital or Indirect or Contract. Only enable the project types you need. You can always add additional project types later. Within each type of project, you can turn on specific features. So if I wanted to go into Revenue, I could turn that on for contract projects. I could track whether I want to directly input it, or maybe I want to set up drivers. Maybe I want to turn on specific forms, calculations, or reporting. All that is done through the Enable Projects Revenue portion. Revenue does only turn on for contract-specific projects, but as I said before, there are two different types I could do. I could do direct input, meaning I'm typing in a dollar amount, or it could be driver-based, and a driver might be how much labor I'm putting into it. Maybe it's a percentage done on-site, maybe it's a percentage done offshore, maybe it's number of people, maybe it's billable hours, maybe it's billable rate. I can put all that in and enable it through the project's revenue portion. You can turn on or off project benefits. If you really just want to capture project financial details, you don't need to do this. But if you want to explain to someone the benefits you expect to get, maybe I'm going to get a certain return on investment or a certain increase in customer satisfaction or a reduction in my supply chain, you can turn on and capture and then track actual versus budget, all of those project benefits. Within project benefits, you can separate out. Do you want to turn on the financial benefits, such as dollar savings or increased revenue? Or do you want to capture non-financial, maybe an increase in customer satisfaction or increase in number of leads? The project benefits help you justify the need for the project and also help you look back later on and see if you actually got the benefit you expected to. Depending on what you turn on, direct input, driver-based, you will get different forms, different calculations, and different reporting to support expense planning. If you have some of the other frameworks that you're using, such as Workforce, 
you have to turn on job rates in workforce to get them to feed across to projects. If you want to track utilization of employees, you go into workforce, select the employee option to do employee level planning, and then that will also feed over and carry back and forth with projects. You might also want to tie this into the capital module, maybe to use, say, equipment rates. You have to first enable the capital module to get the equipment rates, and then that would also feed over to projects. Within the expense projects planning, there are a bunch of pre-built calculations, basically formulas that are calculating. For instance, if you put in a labor rate and number of people, it's going to calculate, and it could, as I said before, pull that across from workforce, or if you're calculating equipment costs, equipment rates, it could pull that from capital, maybe you're looking at material costs, maybe you're directly inputting data. All that is done through the expense portion of the projects framework.